Hi everyone, it's Tuesday. Back to work. We finished a long weekend. Yesterday, a big Buddhist holiday in Thailand. So all the ties back to work today and the traffic yesterday later in the afternoon was crazy. Everybody heading back home. Hope you got home safely and uh, back into things today. I thought I'd start today just with a bit of an update on the 45-day visa exemption. Let's start with a bit of background. This from ThaiEmbassy.com. So let's have a look. And this is the important part here. It says, that starting October the 1st, the double CSA, who were the, well, sort of the governing body of who was coming in and out of Thailand at the time, since being disbanded, announced that the visa exemption stay period will be extended from 30 to 45 days, and the change is currently in effect until the 31st of March. Well, that's only three weeks away, so plenty of people are asking, what's happening? Are they going to extend the visa exemption past the 31st of March? Let's just check a little bit more information. And these are the countries where you can currently uh, arrive from and get the visa exemption. There's about 64 countries there. You can pause this and go back over the list at your convenience and uh, this information at thaiembassy.org. But a lot of countries there, uh, including we've got Vietnam, United States down the end there, the United Kingdom, most Western countries, developed countries are included in that list of 64 countries that can currently uh, arrive in Thailand without a visa. It's called the Visa Exemption Program, and it means that uh, you currently get an automatic 45-day stamp in your passport. Now you can extend that, except if you're from Russia and a few other countries, for another 30 days if you pop down to the Immigration Bureau nearest wherever you are and uh, you have a passport photo, fill out the information, give them 1,900 baht and bingo, you'll get an extra 30 days. Now they also extended the Visa on Arrival program from 15 days to 30 days. And that's meant to be finishing on the 31st of March as well. Now, the tourism minister proposed back in December that they extend the, uh, the, the, the length of this visa exemption from 30 to 45 days past the 31st of March. Now, we did that back in December. Nothing has been discussed since. Now, I've spent the last couple of days combing through just about every corner of the tourism information, and there's nothing that would give us uh, any indication if they are indeed going to extend this uh, visa exemption of 45 days past the 31st of March. So if you arrive in Thailand, this is the way it is at the moment, before the 31st of March, you're going to get 45 days stamped into your passport. If you come after the 31st of March, the way it is at the moment, you're going to only get 30 days. So just checking with uh, other YouTubers and other people who sort of speculate about things like this, and a lot of us think we're sort of on the same uh, train. We think it is going to be extended past the 31st of March, but we're not the ones making the decision. It's strange that only three weeks away and the tourism minister hasn't said anything. The cabinet's said nothing. I mean, we are in this sort of de facto election campaign at the moment. And I think obviously a lot of the politicians are completely preoccupied. And if we are going to hear something, it probably won't be until a couple of days before the end of the month. So that's the latest that we know. I'm sorry I can't be any more concrete than that. But uh, hopefully you can plan your travels around that. TNT on a Tuesday, thank you for dropping in and please, if you get a moment, subscribe to the channel because that does more to help me than anything else you could imagine. So let's do a couple of updates. This from the PatiaNews.com and an American tourist receives reparations from a Bangkok pub after pub guards handcuffed and slapped him in the face. There he is, and he's getting all those lotions and potions. I'm sure that's making him feel a whole lot better. He also got a bit of cash. Let's uh, check on the story. He got 50,000 baht in reparations from the club Khao San in Bangkok after he was handcuffed and slapped in the face by the pub guards over a misunderstanding about a bottle of water Karkaf was an English language teacher with two years in Thailand before returning to the country as a tourist. He was handcuffed and slapped in the face thrice. Three times. Who uses the word thrice? Adam, you've had your thesaurus out. 
by the club Kalsan Bounces after he didn't pay for a bottle of water he'd drunk. The tourist, however, stated he thought the water was complimentary. After he ordered a drink, the two pub guards who handcuffed and slapped the American tourist also took him to a separate room and threatened him with a long knife. I think that's where things went awry. And uh, the incident was secretly recorded by a Thai passerby who posted it, of course, on social media where it went viral. As a result, the two guards, a 30-year-old and a 40-year-old, were charged with assault, carrying weapons, holding a person against their will. The case was settled at the Central Investigation Bureau. Uh, Despite this ordeal, Mr Karkoff says the incident did not affect his good feelings about Thailand. In total, six bouncers and a manager were fired by the club after the incident. So generally a happy ending there for Mr Karkoff and hopefully next time when he comes to Thailand he checks whether the bottle is indeed free or not. To our next story today and I suppose this is our feature story for the day, a bit of a dig deep into the Bangkok Post story, a special interview with the whistleblower to step up a campaign against graft cannabis policy linked to the Bum Jai Thai party. So Bum Jai Thai are in the sights of Chewit. This is the uh, massage parlour king, former MP, whatever you want to call him. And he's going down deep on the uh, Bum Jai Thai party. He's declared war against Bum Jai Thai party's cannabis policy and encouraged voters to join his crusade against allowing recreational use of cannabis at the coming poll. And he says he's going to expose more alleged corruption in the Ministry of Transport, particularly in the Orange Line project, which he believes is linked to Bum Jai Thai. The Orange Line is one of the uh, the new BTS lines that uh, was commissioned last year. The Deputy Prime Minister and Public Health Minister and the Transport Minister, who is also the Secretary General of Bum Jai Thai, are Chewett's targets. Now, these are two big names in the current coalition and obviously the leader and the secretary general of the Bum Jai Thai party. Now, that's the party that uh, sponsored the change to the cannabis laws. He says he's targeting the transport minister who was on Friday suspended by the Constitutional Court pending a ruling on his alleged concealment of shares in a construction firm. So the Transport Minister already in a world of trouble with the Constitutional Court and now these new allegations. And of course, we are in the middle of this de facto election campaign. But the big target by Chewett is actually against the current recreational use of cannabis. The Bangkok Post story goes on to quote him, saying, look at the shops along Khao San Road. In communities and elsewhere in the provinces, you'll see kids smoking pot openly and the police can't do anything due to the ambiguity in the laws used to control cannabis use. So here we have a former MP and the favourite whistleblower of the Thai media basically blowing smoke up the arse of the Bum Jai Thai party and their cannabis policy. He goes on saying Bum Jai Thai should have waited until a more specific law is passed before it pushed to remove cannabis from the list of narcotic drugs via a ministerial regulation. Well, duh, of course. Adding the reason why the party couldn't wait until that was because it wanted to boast about the freeing I think it rather than free cannabis, it's not free, you have to pay for it, but the freeing cannabis policy in its election campaign. He says that the irony is whilst the United Nations still considers cannabis a narcotic drug and Thailand has joined the United Nations Pact on Narcotics Control, the country suddenly decriminalised cannabis using a single ministerial regulation. And it was a surprise. There was no pre-announcement debate. It just was suddenly decriminalised, but without a proper act passed in Parliament to regulate the way it was going to be used. He goes on saying he isn't against medical cannabis at all, but he couldn't help wondering why a police lieutenant general close to the Chitjob family sat on a Food and Drug Administration Committee approving the ministerial regulation to criminalising cannabis. Now he's starting to point fingers and name names. The Prime Minister Prayut Chanachar, he said, didn't do anything to stop the free, freeing cannabis policy of Bum Jai Thai because he was too afraid to lose his job. 
pretty much the current government, the Palang Pracharat-led coalition, would have fallen apart if they lost the support of the Bumjai Thai Party MPs. They would have lost a vote of confidence in the House. He wonders how farmers, he continues, are supposed to benefit from the cannabis policy as claimed by the party when most, if not all, cannabis sold in the country now is imported from California. I can't verify whether that's correct or not. Any of you know about that particular situation? He said if Bunjai Tai eventually wins the election and returns to government, he would accept it as a defeat. From now on, I'll be campaigning against freeing cannabis while supporting medical cannabis. I have no hidden agenda in doing this because I'm not a politician anymore. So that interview, uh, you can read if you want to read the whole thing in the Bangkok Post today. And obviously, he's set the current public health minister and the transport minister in his sights and he's also going hard against the uh, recreational use of cannabis. You're watching TNT, it's Tuesday, plenty more news to come. So tipping over 18,000 subscribers for TNT, I uh, just couldn't have imagined that would have happened so quickly. Thank you so, so much. It's very, very hard to build up subscribers these days on YouTube. So I am eternally grateful for all of you for uh, supporting the program. Really, I do appreciate it. So let's move on to our next story. This covered by Phuket-Go.com. Thai health officials worried about the growing number of fat kids. One in 10 Thai children's now considered obese. According to a report from the country's Department of Health, one in 10 children is now considered obese, according to a report from the country's Department of Health. A doctor from the Department of Health, this is the second paragraph, says parents must act to provide a healthier diet for children who are currently exposed to unhealthy levels of fat, sugar and salt. The latest report indicates that things will only get worse until parents and teachers act to increase nutritional awareness among children. Certainly education is the big thing here. We really need to educate kids about what they should be putting into their mouths. According to a Bangkok Post report, the World Obesity Federation says that rates of childhood obesity are likely to double between 2020 and 2035. And then the doctor says the children often make bad choices when left to choose what to eat. Oh goodness, the things I used to eat when I was home by myself, which is only made worse by the marketing strategies of confectionery manufacturers. Here in Thailand, certainly the laws are quite lax on what advertisers can advertise and the way they advertise it. And parents and schools should teach them how to select good food and the consequences to their health a poor diet can pose. Now to our next three stories, which we put under the headline of wildlife. So let's do wildlife number one. And this is from the BangkokPost.com. A court jails five hunters for killing tigers. There's a fairly horrific photo that was taken last year when they found this camp. And there's a rather horrific photo that was taken last year when they arrested these people, found the pelts of a tiger and the cub and also a cow, of all things. And from Kanchanaburi, the provincial court there has sentenced five hunters to almost five years in prison for killing a tiger and her cub in a national park. In addition, the court ordered all five hunters to pay 750,000 baht plus 5% interest in damages to the Department of National Parks, Wildlife and Conservation. To wildlife number two, also from the Bangkok Post today, reports that macaques bound for China found stuffed in smugglers' cages. This story's actually been reported in a lot of media today. A lot of people feeling quite strong about this particular story. And this is from Nakon Ratchasima. 47 macaques being smuggled out of Thailand for probable use in Chinese traditional medicine were found crammed into plastic cages on the back of pickup trucks in Nakon Ratchasima yesterday. The two men were arrested and the stop was part of an ongoing investigation into wildlife smuggling. One of the pickups was found to be carrying many plastic cages packed with a total of 47 live macaques in small net bags. One of the animals was sick, all were suffering. Of course they were suffering. Down the bottom, police said the pair admitted to transporting the monkeys, but claimed they were unaware the animals were protected wildlife and that they were breaking the law. (coughs) Bullshit. 
excuse me. And the macaques were destined for China. He said he believed they were intended for use in Chinese traditional medicine and the rescued animals would be taken to a wildlife centre in Konsan district of Chaipum. And to our next story, I suppose you'd call this wildlife number three. A wild elephant uses its trunk to flip a passing truck east of Bangkok. And a wild elephant in Cha Chong Sao wandered across the road, stopped a passing truck and gently tipped it over on Saturday evening. It's thought the elephant was hungry and it decided there might be food inside the truck. Officials arrived at the scene and ushered the elephant away from a distance, I'm assuming. They uh, then helped the truck driver exit the vehicle. The driver escaped his ordeal without injuries. And uh, the person who took the video said, I urge officials to keep a close watch on the area and motorists to avoid driving near this elephant. Not that we'd really know who that elephant was unless they're wearing name tags. That's about the closest we've got. I couldn't find the original video. I'll just get out of the picture there. And you can see uh, the elephant there tipping over one of those sort of delivery trucks and it would have had a fairly high centre of gravity, wouldn't have taken much to tip it over. So certainly if you are heading to any of the national parks, always good to uh, just leave a bit of space between you and the elephants. They usually bear you no harm, but of course if you do get close, uh, just because of their sheer size, they can do things like, well, push trucks over. And a regional story now, and this is a situation happening not far from the south of Thailand. No respite for Malaysian flood victims. The number climbs to 53,000, this reported in the Straits Times. And Johor is bearing the brunt of the floods as continuous pelting rain since early last week has seen nearly 50,000 people from 14,000 families seeking shelter at 270 temporary relief centres. And uh, there's eight districts listed there in the southern part of Malaysia, currently closed for all vehicles due to the floods. I've done a little map here, which uh, sort of gives you a bit of orientation. Up the top there, you can see uh, that's where Phuket is. And you can see the border of Thailand there in the middle. Then right down the south of Malaysia, you've got those major flooding zones. And the circle at the bottom there is Singapore right at the very bottom of the Malay Peninsula. So the latest there in the flood obviously affecting uh, a lot of people. I imagine just given where that's happening, that Singapore is also getting quite a lot of rain. Uh, haven't really had any particular news about that though, so somehow they seem to be avoiding the worst of it. That's the latest we have in our quick whip around Thailand and some regional news. Hopefully you're up to date. Please subscribe to the channel if you get a chance. Big thanks to our sponsors, Five Star Marine. If you are heading out uh, off the coast of Phuket and you'd like a private tour of some of the beautiful islands around Phuket, then make sure you contact Five Star Marine. There's a link in the description of this video. Thanks to them. Thanks to you. And I'll see you tomorrow.